What's up, everybody? This is DJ Endo. I've been a product specialist for Native Instruments for a few years now. And one of the most common questions I get as a tractor specialist is, how can I sync Ableton Live to Tractor? A common misconception is that in order to do this, you need to have two computers and two audio interfaces. And this is actually not true. You can actually use both programs together on one computer using one audio interface. So as long as your beak grids and Tractor are set correctly and your tracks are warped correctly in Ableton, you can mix tracks in Tractor while you play your loops or other instruments in Ableton Live and everything will be perfectly beat matched. Some artists that are using Tractor and Ableton together are Dubfire, Pete Tong, Carl Craig, Chris Liebing, Davide Squalacci, Richie Houghton, and Luciano. Not too long ago, the only way to sync Ableton and Tractor that I knew of was to use a MIDI cable. In a recent Tractor update, Native Instruments introduced Tractor's virtual MIDI output port, which means you can send MIDI internally inside your computer from Tractor to any program that receives MIDI and vice versa. So setting up Tractor and Ableton to sync together takes a little time, but once you have the two programs synced, you shouldn't have to mess with any settings because they'll be saved for each time you load the programs. So here's how we sync Tractor and Ableton. First, I'm going to open the Tractor Preferences and go to the MIDI clock section and I'm going to turn on the option to send MIDI clock and I always keep the MIDI clock sending offset at zero milliseconds now I'm going to make sure my sound card is set to audio 8 DJ or whatever sound card you're using and also I'm going to make sure my output routing is set up correctly and we're going to need to be an external so the next thing I'm going to do is in my preferences I'm going to go to the layout manager tab and make sure that show global section is selected this way I can see my master clock section in tractor now we're going to make a new MIDI device in the controller editor so tractor can send MIDI clock to Ableton here's how we do it we're going to go to the preferences so if I go up to my device menu here I'm going to add a new device in tractor it's going to be a generic MIDI device and I'm going to rename this device and call it clock. So I'll click on edit comment. I'll name it clock. And I'm going to set the out port to tractor's virtual output. So tractor's virtual output is actually an internal MIDI clock that it can send within the computer. So you don't have to use cables anymore. Now I'm going to make sure that no other device is sending MIDI clock through this port. So I'm going to select each device in the device menu and just make sure the out ports aren't set to all for all of my devices because we don't want any MIDI clock loops happening. So the next thing we're going to do is set Ableton Live to receive MIDI clock from Tractor. So I'm going to open Ableton Live. I'm going to go to the preferences and go to the MIDI sync tab. And in the MIDI ports list where I see Tractor virtual output, I'm going to turn the track button on, the sync button on, and the remote button on. So now if we look at Ableton, we can see this EXT button. If I click on this, now Ableton is receiving external clock from Tractor. Next, I'm going to set my audio in Ableton. Go to Ableton Live Preferences. Go to Audio. I'm going to set the output to Audio 8 DJ. I'm going to go to my audio output configuration, make sure output 1 and 2 is turned on. So now that we have that set up, I'm going to start sending MIDI clock from Tractor to Ableton. I'm going to go back to my Tractor screen and click on the Master Clock section. I'm going to set my clock to Auto Mode, which means whatever deck's been playing the longest will be the Master Deck and the Master Clock that Ableton will be syncing to. So now I'm going to send MIDI clock from Tractor to Ableton. To do this, I'm going to click on the play button in the master clock section. So now you can see this green lights blinking next to Ableton's external button. So that means I'm getting clock signal. Now I'm going to click the sync button in the master clock section and that will make sure that Ableton starts getting clock from Tractor. Now it's important to note that when you push the sync button, you want to push it on the first beat in a measure so Ableton knows where the one is. So now that we have MIDI clock sending from Tractor to Ableton, now we have to make sure the two programs are in sync with each other by adjusting Ableton's MIDI clock sync delay using the metronome from both programs to match both programs. So here's how we do this. 
So in Tractor's master clock panel, turn on the tick button. Also turn on the Q button for deck A. This will make it so you can hear a metronome sound representing Tractor's master clock. So in Ableton, turn on the metronome by clicking on the metronome button in the master clock section. So now you should have an audible metronome playing in both programs. So the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the MIDI clock sync delay in Ableton so that the metronomes in both programs are playing perfectly in sync. So to do this, I'm going to go to my Ableton preferences, MIDI sync. I'm going to click on my tractor virtual input. Now, see this bar where it says MIDI clock sync delay? I'm actually going to click on that and drag it up and down. It's going to adjust the offset of the metronome. I'm going to keep moving it until the metronomes are perfectly clicking in sync with each other. Found a good value is to be about negative 17 milliseconds. So now once we got Tractor and Ableton synced together and the metronomes are clicking together, we're going to play a track in Tractor and a loop in Ableton. And it's going to be perfectly in sync. Thanks for watching. This is DJ Endo. For more tutorials, check out youtube.com slash dubspot.